Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast. And if you are listening to this live on the day, then today is my birthday. I am 51 today, so the 23rd of November, if you're listening to it on its release date, release on a Wednesday. Uh, yeah, and I am I'm 51 today and I have to say I have had a brilliant year. I would say quite possibly um, one of the best years I've had. I've done lots and lots of traveling um, from just before my birthday, Hubby took me away to Istanbul, which was one of my kind of on my wish list. And we had a wonderful time. And then it just feels like we've been away all the time. It's been a mad, mad, mad year. We won't be uh, traveling quite so much next year, but it has been amazing. Uh, we thoroughly enjoyed it, had lots of adventures. Um, and, you know, traveling is the thing that really lights me up. So I had a brilliant time. Anyway, that, enough about me. What was this week's podcast about? So this week's podcast we are talking about reducing your costs and your energy. Now, I actually wanted to call it reduce your costs and protect your personal energy this Christmas, but it was a bit of a mouthful and it wouldn't show up on all the kind of slides and stuff. So I've put reduce your costs and energy, but really this week's podcast is all about, yes, it's about finances and you know, we're all worried about um, the financial implications. I've just had our revised fuel bills come through and oh my goodness me, how much money a month we pay monthly. I think lots of people do. Ugh, it's a bit scary, really. Um, and Christmas is coming and it gets, I think it gets more and more expensive. And this year I am really thinking about what I'm spending and actually what I'm doing because I am as guilty as anyone for stuffing that fridge full of things that then I'm then frantically trying to cook because I don't like waste. So frantically trying to cook and freeze and no room and stuff. I remember a few years ago, I had my in-laws for Christmas. My, my in-laws came down to stay for a few days and my mom and her partner came for Christmas lunch and I uh, filled filled the house, filled the fridge. And then I remember on Boxing Day night, I opened the fridge and I literally still couldn't get anything into it. It obviously had stuff in the garage and things like this. And so I've been bringing it in and putting it into the fridge. And even on Boxing Day night, the fridge was still rammed full of food. So I'm going to give you my tips, okay, I'm going to give you some nutrition advice as well along the way, but this is really more about, for me, this is really about protecting your energy. And for me, that's the most important thing. I remember as a kid, I remember my dad more on more than one occasion barely being able to get off the sofa on Christmas Day because we were living in houses that needed work doing to it. And he'd stayed up till 4 a.m. The you know every night and up to Christmas to make sure that we'd got a lounge so that we could have Christmas Day. I remember my mom, you know, falling asleep after lunch because she'd been exhausted and things. So for me, it's about kind of protecting your energy as much as reducing costs and things as well. So I've kind of told you a little bit about some of my Christmas, not necessarily the best things. I'm going to tell you some nice things about my Christmases. But what I really want you to do before you start anything, before you start this, is this is a really good episode to sit down and make a few notes. Um, so if you have time or even to save it and play again. Um, but actually, I think it's probably coming out at the right time because it gives you still, still should give you enough time to take action on what I'm saying prior to Christmas. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to look back and think about what you remember most about Christmas. I always joke and say one of the things I always remember at Christmas is having a satsuma in my Christmas stocking. And I still always make sure that we have satsumas in the house at Christmas. And to me, they are Christmas oranges. And much for the rest of the year, they don't really taste the same. Um, my husband eats them all year round. And I know they're available all year round. But for me, it's a winter time. It's a Christmas thing. And I love to have a satsuma at Christmas time. And it just remembers me. It was a bit of a joke thing. But we always had a satsuma in the bottom of our Christmas stocking. Okay, now it's going to take some effort. Okay, there are not... It's not going to be straightforward. You can't just rock up to Christmas Day and Boxing Day, however long, you know, Christmas Eve, however long your holiday period starts. You can't just rock up and it and expect it to happen. So be prepared to put some time and energy in now. But remember that this is going to save you energy Christmas time. And it's also going to save you money. 
So first thing is, is how to save money on your food shopping. Christmas food shopping bills are bloody ridiculous. Yes, I did sort of swear. Bloody ridiculous. I'm going to say it again. If there's kids in the car, I'm sorry. So <laughs> they are expensive. So first thing is I want you to make a meal plan. Just a rough meal plan will do to start with. Think about how many days are you at home? You might be working over the Christmas period, so that might have an impact on it. Are you going to eat out with family and friends? Are you going to go go to someone else's house? Like, for example, I'm going to go to my mum's on Boxing Day this year, so I'm not, I'm just going to do breakfast on Boxing Day. That's it. So I need to make sure that I don't buy stuff for Boxing Day. So think about where you're going to be and how many people you're going to have. So we're going to have people to ours on Christmas Day night. So I need to be planning for more people on Christmas Day night, but just two people for breakfast on Boxing Day. So do a rough plan, kind of the meals that's going to be included. Like I said, if it's Christmas Eve for you, if it's Boxing Day the day after, you might want to include New Year on this. I do think that's maybe a bit far in advance, but, you know, think about that period that you're going to be at home or going to have people around. How many people are you going to have and how many meals do you need to actually prepare? What can you pre-make and pre-prepare and start doing that now? There is no reason why you can't start making that lasagna for Christmas Eve. If that's what you want, start making it now. So don't, so make your meal plan, optimize leftovers, optimize your freezer and don't be tempted to over cater. So if you're going to have a big breakfast on Boxing Day, for example, it's most likely that you're not going to get up till fairly late. The kids are maybe like might have a bowl of cereal to stave them off until you can manage to face making that full English breakfast on Boxing Day morning. But you're probably not going to eat it till 10 o'clock, maybe even 11 o'clock. You don't want lunch. You're not going to eat again till tea time. So don't be tempted to over cater just just enough is going to be enough because you're probably going to buy more than you need anyway. So do the bare minimum. You've always got food in the house. You can always make beans on toast. You know, there's always an option in there. You're not going to have a totally empty pantry and a totally empty freezer. So if someone does say I'm hungry, there's going to be something in the house to eat. So do not over cater. Then make your list make your shopping list. And if you can, I would really recommend online shopping. Firstly, the shops are a nightmare at this time of year. So this is going to save your energy levels. Remember, protecting your personal energy. It's going to save you money because you're not going to be tempted. You're literally going to go down your shopping list. You're going to put the stuff in the, in the, the cart and it's going to come to you. You're not going to be tempted walking up and down, forget things, which is what I tend to do. So I have to go back three times to get it. Or, you know, oh, I'll get that. Oh, that looks nice. I'll just pop that in the basket well, that's not on your list. Don't put it in the basket, put it back. Try and get as much done as you possibly can beforehand to save your energy levels. Prep as much as you can. It is the best way to protect your own personal energy. Christmas can be a really demanding time. And if you've been waking up at five o'clock in the morning to open presents, is that just me in my house? Still a big kid, get excited about Christmas. But it becomes a really long, hard day. To try and get as much done in advance as you can and enjoy the day. Do not stress about whether you make the best gravy or the best potatoes. No one's going to remember that. They're going to remember the great party games that they played, the fun times that they had playing with their games and with you. So enjoy yourselves, protect your energy, and hopefully I've given you some ideas to help you save costs as well as energy this Christmas, but get planning now, guys. It's never too late. If you were listening to this on the day that it goes out, it is just over a month till Christmas. So I don't even know if there's any shopping um, slots left. So get online today, book your shopping slot, just shove some stuff in it and then edit it later. That's what I tend to do. Book the slot now so you've got it. Um, That's it for this week. I will see you next week for the last Um, episode in November and then we're into December. Wow, nearly the end of the year, guys. Scary, isn't it? That's why we're talking about Christmas. So I'll see you next week. Take care.